What is up? Welcome to this week's episode of the Unbreakable Man podcast. In today's episode, we are going to dive deep with Sam Morris. He is an incredible coach and facilitator and helps you unpack and uncover a lot relative to the human experience and human condition. I know you're going to get a ton out of this episode. And as always, it is one thing to listen to a podcast. It is a whole other thing to execute. If you want to join an elite group of men dedicated to serving a purpose greater than themselves and living life on their terms, go to our website or click the link in the description to register for the Circle of Kings. And as always, enjoy this week's episode of the Unbreakable Man podcast. What is up, beautiful humans? This is Dr. Dave Cahotis. I am on a mission to forge strong, heart-centered, and purpose-driven men. And this podcast is here to help you stop managing your problems and start breaking free of stress, limiting beliefs, and excuses that stop you from executing at your fullest potential, living with passion, and being the man you want to be. Let's go. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? Not much. Psyched, All right. to, psyched to be here with you. Dude, welcome to the show, man. So uh, this is the Unbreakable Podcast, and yes. we were actually chatting before we got here. We finally were able to dial in a space, number one. <laughs> we were on a great adventure. It was actually like we were supposed to meet last week. Yeah. There was COVID, yeah. and then... And then even I think the week before that, there was something that... that I that, had COVID. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. We, we went, both of us did. Man, we finally got into a space. Here we are having this conversation. I love this. So before we, you and I actually even hit record today, we were talking about the word unbreakable. Yeah. And how, so my company name is The Unbreakable Self, and, and you were talking about the word unbreakable, how that really resonates with you. So mm -hmm. talk to me about what that word means for you yeah i think that's a that's a really powerful story yeah so you know unbreakable i think as as men it kind of falls into that like, like yeah be unbreakable be tough be strong yeah. and for me for a long time i you know i spent 18 years struggling with drugs and alcohol mm. um, in and out of rehabs in and out of jail in and out of hospital all these yeah. things and partially that was fueled by this idea that i was unbreakable Mm. that i was invincible yeah like, like yeah, yeah invincible like, like you couldn't be broken I couldn't be broken yeah I couldn't be killed mm -hmm. I couldn't, mm -hmm. and so i was like i had that kind of like rock on rah rah like yeah i'm unbreakable throw, come at me like yeah. lieutenant dan on top of the the mast in the storm <laughs> <laughs> so and so like <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> that's the best visual ever man right i love that like, you know, <laughs> and so you can't take me no. <laughs> that's all you got <laughs> that's all you got <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I, it was like this, this like reckless, destructive fuel that I was using to like party. Yeah. And so like, you know, like things happen. Like I fell off a balcony 35 feet, which uh, I just found out recently in an ayahuasca ceremony that was actually a suicide attempt. Oh wow! I didn't know that at the time. It, it like came like uh, I'm gonna get into that in a minute, but yeah, that I got hit by a car on my bike. I multiple car accidents, yeah. like bad car accidents, DUIs, like yeah. all these things that I was putting into this unbreak like i'm unbreakable i'm yeah. like tough and strong yeah and it was just so destructive yeah and so finally you know eventually i, I had to shift that yeah. so unbreakable became like this spirit in me mm. this like this drive to su like survival yeah and so again surviving needs to shift to thriving yeah but, like for me like tapping into an unbreakable spirit an unbreakable will an unbreakable like i'm relentlessly going to figure this out mm. like, using it as like from destructive to constructive mm. and just tapping into that and not having that less like bucket mentality. Yeah, dude, I love that. I mean, that's essentially the exact same thing that led me into the word unbreakable. And, and I shared this with you earlier, but for me, it was being broken as a man, not knowing which way was up, not knowing how to, what am I doing in this life? And as soon as I let go and let the, like the outer core crack open and through those breaks i recognize that there's a light there is a light that is shining that is moving through me like that unbreakable spirit that part of us that is all all of us we have this unbreakable self and and some of us call it our spirit some of us call it our higher self mm -hmm. that inner knowing that inner wisdom whatever you want to call it once you allow yourself just to break open let go of those old identities those yeah. those things that you're holding on to it's like a sigh of relief now. It's like, oh, I don't have to hold on. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Now I can live as my unbreakable self, and that's what led me into even the logo, the the phoenix rising, yeah, yeah, and beautiful. you know, with the king symbol that is a very archetypal symbol. You yeah. know, I I definitely chose it with conscious thought, but it's so true, man. Like sometimes we can think we're unbreakable, and like almost like we are kind of in an egoic sense that yeah, like especially young men. It, you know, like, yeah. it, it, like we're like the hero and like, I cannot be killed. You know, yeah, yeah. I've had many a moment oh, in my man, life. So many. <laughs> so many. I actually chose, I, I consciously chose never to buy a motorcycle for that reason. I Smart. knew it. Yeah, yeah, I knew it. It's similar. I knew, yeah, right. yeah, I knew that. Like, that seems a little bit too dangerous. For me. Yeah, I know. It's like, I know I'm unbreakable, but something in me tells me that yeah. that one will get me. And I'm, <laughs> I like this life, so I'm going to just, I'm going to stick around. I'm yeah, going to yeah. stick around for yeah. a while. So let's kind of like, kind of backtrack actually into your story. You mentioned you had sit with it in your ayahuasca experience, and we could talk about plant medicine all day. We definitely go that route, but so many ways we can go. Is talk to me about, you know, when you recognized, you weren't unbreakable from the egoic sense and that moment, even in a suicide attempt, right? Like when you, when you recognize like, fuck, I am broken. I am, I'm hurting right now. Yeah. Like, can walk me through that, that part of your story. Ah, uh, wow. So that was like, that was a, that was a slow burn. Yeah. Um, you know, like 18 years, like, and I used to think it was when I first kind of like got out of that stage of, of abusing drugs and alcohol i was 38 mm, yeah and i i looked back and I, I had it at five years yeah 33 is when i got like i got in a car accident mm. first trip to rehab first trip to jail first arrest for dui yeah i had some other duis in the past but there was they just kind of went by the wayside yeah but as i did work i yeah. recognized like no i was actually 15 years Mm. And then I did more work, and I was like, "Well, if I'm being honest with myself, it was actually like more like 18 years." Yeah, like when things started to go haywire. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, realizing that I was broken, mm. it's a conversation. Bro- be- the word "broken" is accurate. Yeah. However, it's something that needs to be a, a short-term use. I agree. Because yeah. if you are constant, like this is a problem. This is one of the reasons I left AA. Yeah, and I have nothing. No, I have no beef with AA. Like I, I it did a lot for me. Yeah, it got me sober. It, yeah, it gave me six years. It, it catalyzed my life to what it is now. Mm-hmm. But eventually, like I had this underlying conversation of like always trying to fix something. Oh, yeah. And so, if you're always trying to fix something, what you're not saying to yourself, yeah, but what you're actually mm. saying to yourself, I'm broken. Yes. So if I'm always broken, yes, I'm always broken. Yes. And it, it's accepting the, the cracks. It's accepting yeah. the cracks, and, and then so, and then letting the shell just completely right. fall away and it's, it's just like it's like the you know uh, cars are a great analogy for life in, in a lot of ways like yeah. one is like if your engine light is not on yeah you're not gonna take your car to the shop right but like if you're if you're a human and you're operating with like your engine light's not on but you're in the shop like what are you doing mm. like you're fixing things that aren't broken so recognizing where you're off track or out of alignment and you know aka broken yeah and, and addressing that and then yeah. moving on yeah yeah and you know, I, th- I think we all do get to that moment. And it, it, to be honest, I, I feel like that is the moment for us to catalyze so much healing yep. and release. Because what I was mentioning earlier, it's like we can, from an egoic sense, try to like, we see the shell around us. And that shell is our identity. It's the standards that we live with that we think like, oh, yeah, yeah, like this is the way I'm, I'm supposed to show up as a man, as a, as a husband, as a provider, whatever that, yeah. that thing is. And if things start to fracture, like the light is getting through, we reject the light, like the part of us that is calling us for, like a potential, yeah, like a greater version of ourselves. We reject it, and then we try to hold on, like hold on to the, like, and we deny the idea of being broken. And you were mentioning it was a slow burn, slow burn for me too. And I recognized, oh, dude, like as soon as I finally accepted, right, like there's a crack, there's a fracture, mm-hmm. like. I am shitty at this part of my life. Like mm-hmm. I fucking suck here. Right? <laughs> like suck. Like in like the capital S, right? When you recognize and you truly accept that, and you can actually grieve that part of you. Cause like you don't have to hold on anymore. Yeah. You don't have to hold on to the idea of being broken. So I, I do know what you mean with the sense of like accepting it, but don't own that. Like don't like sit there. Don't set up camp there. Yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah. I, I was yeah. just about to say, like, yeah. when you can recognize that, okay, yeah, I'm not excelling at that part of my life. I suck at that part of my life right now. That part of my life is the wheel. 
Yeah. There's the, the padunk, padunk, yeah. padunk yeah. at that part of my life right now, right? <laughs> and when, <laughs> yeah. Like, thump, 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 like yeah. that part's yeah. the flat wheel there. But when you can recognize it, like, this is just a right now thing. Yeah. It's not a life sentence. Like, I don't mm. have to live here. Yes. That's when it becomes manageable. It, like, if you, and that's part of the thing with, like, addiction or depression. Yeah. Anxiety. Like, those things are so oppressive and, like, mm. all-consuming that you're like, this is just how I am now. What led you into addiction now that you're out yeah. right on the other side? Oh, my gosh. This is a good one. Yeah. So, for a long time, I was like, and when I first got sober, I was like, oh, you know, I just, I was just like that guy that liked to have a lot of fun and it just got, it went sideways. Yeah. And that's a very, very surface level. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it's, it's actually true. There's truth to it. Yeah. However. Yeah. The, the way that I was liking to have fun, mm. the real root, shame. Mm. Shame. Shame. Uh, shame about who, just who Sam is. Yes. Who Sam, like the man that Sam is. Yes. The boy that Sam was. Mm. It was just rooted in shame and lack of self-worth and yeah. lack of self-trust mm. so the shame yeah. when i was a little yeah yeah man i was <laughs> so doing that I this, and this is raise my hand this is like, why ayahuasca same guy. is so yeah. it was so ayahuasca there's many things i've done recently that are very important yeah ayahuasca was like one of the most important things i'd ever done in my mm. life it was not only just ayahuasca but like going to the jungle for three weeks Ooh. and being in the middle of the amazon with yeah. the Shipibo people in disconnected Peru. Yeah. in Peru. Oh man. Just I swear to this day, like I could just go do that for three weeks and get ample medicine. Mm. And then the ayahuasca on top of it is just it's all magic. It's, yeah. But profound. this showed me so many things. Like it showed mm. me the shame. Like it, mm. I was like basically I was like I went there with the intention of mm -mm. just show me what I don't know about why I am like I am. Yeah. And like it's not that and I wasn't from a place of like poor me, poor me, why I am like I am. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just need to know like what fuels me. Yeah. And so as ayahuasca does, took me all the way back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the way back. Absolutely. You know, it's like pre-birth and uh, like yeah. all the places. Right? All of it, yeah. yeah. Like, you want to know? We're talking okay, about, here yeah. we go. You're going to know. And, and for people that don't know what ayahuasca is, can you explain that? Okay, so I, yeah, ayahuasca is a root, which, really, which basically means vine of death. Okay. And the, so the ayahuasca root is the, it grows in the jungle. Yeah. And then they, they brew it. They yep. smash it up with like, take wood, these wooden mallets and just yeah. smash it. Like, okay. Pul yeah, yeah. Pul uh, mm -hmm. Pulverize it. Yeah. And then they, they put it in a big pot. Yeah. Heat it up, cook it for like eight or nine hours yeah. with a, another, another plant called the chacruna. Okay. Which is, so the com combination there makes the brew. Yeah. The, the, and you've drank it. It's, yeah. I, I've, I've had it's, it. It's, it's a com, it, it's for me. It was, it's the thickness of like, I don't even know. Like it's, it's not water and it's, it's not quite mud, it's, <laughs> but it's like. You gotta, you gotta put it back. It's like a light maple syrup. Yeah. Like a very amber maple syrup. Yeah, yeah. But like, a little bit of a kick to it. Well, the, yeah. The flavor <laughs> is rotten prune juice and Jägermeister. <laughs> yeah. That's a great analogy. <laughs> and it doesn't get any easier. And it, oh, the more you drink it, it does not get, so you don't get funny. used to it. It uh. gets worse. <laughs> by, the, by the 12th night, I was like, oh. Like, oh. I'm not afraid of what I'm going to do in the ceremony. I'm afraid of drinking it. The, the, the taste like, yeah. alone. Just stomaching it. And then you get, yeah. you get one cup with like some of the plant residue in it, like a like mm -hmm. lumpy. Yeah. Oh. And, and you got to, I, I just added a little bit of water to oh, mine and kind of shook it up and just It was pitch it black back. when I drank it. They were just like, here, drink this. Like, and then, yeah. And so, so yeah. So Go back ahead. to the lesson there. So yeah. shame. Yeah. Growing up, I, I was, so first of all, tr birth trauma. Uh, when I was born, I had to be emergency section. The, the umbilical cord was wrapped around my head. So mm. a lot of my struggle in my life, like part of my soul contract here is breath. This is why mm. breath work is so important to me. Yeah. So I was born, umbilical cord wrapped around my head, yeah. unable to breathe, born with severe asthma, severe food allergies. And throughout the first 15 years of my life, mm. I had this tendency to choke on my food. So all three of those things. So asthma, your lungs yeah. are not working correctly. Yeah. Food allergies, your mm. throat closes up, breath. Yeah. Choking, your throat gets blocked, breath. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I have, like, throat chakra. Like, it's all past life stuff about not being heard, not being seen. Yeah. An inability to use my voice. Yeah. And, like, and there's some things that I've seen about past lives. Like, I always go back to Native American. That's, that's like, the most recent past life. Okay. And I was hung from a tree at some point. Oh, wow. So, I have this, you know, noose around my neck. And there's, yeah. there's, there's a drowning incident. Yeah. That I have this memory of that my parents say never happened, but I have this like, yeah. Like, I remember being underwater. Yeah, like, I was there. Like, and if you've never experienced past lives, I've experienced <coughs> past lives as well. Yeah. 
if you never experienced past lives, it, you know, like, I wouldn't say consider yourself lucky, but it's like it's a whole nother ball of wax. It opens it's, up a can, it opens cans up. of worms. I've been thrust back in even just meditations, thrust back into past lives and felt like a spear was pulled out of my chest. Oh. And that one was nuts. That wow. one was crazy because I remember being so upset at the divine, so pissed because mm. what was happening really was a love of mine at the time, she drowned. And that soul and I chose in that moment that we needed to evolve as souls. So we split apart because we were together for every lifetime before that. And this was, I remember myself just as like a large like Grecian man. I don't know exactly where I was, but it was just, I was on the shore, I was watching in the, in the water, and she fell over with our children on the boat, oh. all three of them. And she drowned, and the children drowned. And I remember like that feeling. And again, this is it's kind of nut stuff, too, because it's like when you open yourself up to be like, all right, I'm ready to heal. And like you do heal in this lifetime because there's a lot of stuff that we are carrying now, uh -huh. but you have no idea like the consciousness that streams through us that actually is, is needing to be seen from past lives. Like That's so, it, it, it's like a, it's like there, it's like waiting in the wings. We, yeah, we're like, our DNA is literally a library of all of that. Yes. And it's part of the, like, you're right. It's, like you see that stuff, you're like, yeah. oh my Lord. In, like, in a, yeah, in a way it's also, nuts. Yeah. But also there's like, oh, thank, like I'm so like, the yeah. knowledge is yeah. so helpful. Like, yeah. Cause like you carry these things around this, like this breathing thing or this shame and you're like, yeah. I don't feel like you almost feel unattached to it, but you're like, God, why won't it go away? Yeah, it's not yours. Yeah, you're carrying someone else's or some past version of you, yeah. the past life's version. Like you're carrying the shame for somebody else that's not yours. And so your yeah. job in this lifetime is to release that for you. Yeah, and for them. Yeah, yeah, and for the future. Yeah, I feel that, and and in, in fact, and we'll we can d go from you know obviously you, you identified okay shame is a super important like part that that causes us to like kind of feel small in these things. And you were talking about breath work and, and for, if anybody doesn't know, I facilitate somatic release breath work, which yep. is a, a very similar form of, of breath work. And I recognize the exact same thing through inspiration. We allow ourselves to expand, to bring the light that is us, this consciousness, this energetic consciousness back into our vessel. Yeah. And then what it's almost like a cleansing process. We can go through this natural primordial expression and that that expression can come out in the most profound ways it can it could be shaking it could be crying it could be speaking in tongues it yeah. could be screaming you know you name it like i've gone through the whole gambit and i found from that incredible healing so you you got into breath work yes. from, from that perspective but yeah so the the Oh, backtrack just a second. Yeah, yeah. So the shame was developed mm. because when I was so sick as a kid, like I felt so different than all my peers. I felt like a burden to my family. Mm. And so I, I embodied, I was like, I'm ashamed of who I am. Mm. I'm ashamed. I'm, yeah. And then I get, you know, going through high school and like feeling like that zero to eight, those, those cognitive years, those when we're a sponge. Mm. I now was having this experience in high school where I am less than, and so I'm, I'm less than everybody around me. Yeah, and this is my like it's a default of mine. It's a safe place for me, but it's mm. also it's shame fueled. So all my addiction was shame fueled. All my the suicide attempt was shame fueled. Yeah, like being so ashamed of who I am, to relieve that shame was drink, just get hammered. Yeah, and then I become this like, I, it's almost like I tap into my higher self, but it's like it's mm. really not because it's so low <laughs> vibrational. Yeah, back to the breath. So like for me, like one of the things I used to tell myself, like mm. when I was struggling financially or when I was struggling. With like depression, it was like yeah. I just need some breathing room. I just feel like I have no breathing room, and I ne and then finally, like a couple, like five years ago, I put, I was like, oh, because breath, yeah, like, it, it all goes back to breath. And then you were just talking about inspiration, yeah. respiration. Mm. The root word there is spirit. So yeah. the root of breath is spirit. In, in spirit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like we're tied. Like our breath mm. is tied to like the cosmic expansion, the quantum expansion. So I want to touch on something actually you just mentioned, and I think this is, that was a really profound, which is an unconscious statement you would tell yourself. I would tell myself something like, I feel trapped in my own life. Mm. I feel caged. I feel like I can't get out, right? And in a way, we subconsciously say these things when that's exactly where we need to go. Like we need to go exactly to whatever that, like you were mentioning, I feel like I need a breath, or I, I, need, I, need, breathing like, room, yeah. I need breathing room. Like there's code and it's as if like, if you're listening right now, I want you to stop and just like consider like what statements do you tell yourself 
because we all say things that like other people will pick up on and they'll notice it. They'll notice your pattern, but you won't notice your pattern because you're just sort of in the, the servo mechanism, yeah, right? Yeah. You're in the computer yeah, yeah. of it, like the matrix essentially. Right. And when you come out of that, and you're like, oh shit. Like, and then you can dive deeper and like, hey, like, why do I say this? What's underneath this? What am I experiencing here? Mm -hmm. and, like, there is such profound healing that can happen because it's gonna guide you in a path that you need to go, which is so potent. You're almost like predicting your future. You're predi right. you're, you're, you're leading yourself. So I, I believe in two egos. Okay. We have a noble ego, which okay. is the one that is doing that, which is leading us to our higher self. Mm. We have the destructive ego, which is the one that's like the heavy handed safety ego. Ooh. So it's like, you know, like, okay. our ego, like, we have an ego for a reason. It's safety. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, when we can realize that, when we can get our ego to agree that safety is growth and not safety is not staying the same, yeah, then that's the ego on a team. So that ego, like, the, the language that they're using, the subconsciously or whatever it is, like the yeah. breathing room or the trap, is your ego saying, like, you know, we need to go over here. Yeah. And then the yeah. other ego is like, no, no, no. Like, we're safe here being trapped. Like, we like being trapped. I like not breathing. Like, that's familiar and safe for me. It, it, I've heard of, okay, so, like, the little devil on the corner or on the shoulder and the, and the angel, yeah. right? It's almost, what's interesting about that, I've heard of, of that aspect, but I've never considered, like, okay, the noble ego, meaning you should do this or, like, go here. But in a sense, is it all still just trying to keep you safe? Does that make sense? Like, you're justifying your actions <laughs> in a way that you know, like, oh, I know that I... I should do this. I should break through this fear. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about that for days, <laughs> which is that's the path if you wanted to go anywhere, breaking through your fear. But is it in a sense, because I see that in myself sometimes, I see that in other people that are very close to me, that they're acting nobly, but still from fear, like fear of abandonment. They'll act in a way, like they'll fortify everything around them to make sure that everyone else is safe or stable yeah. so that those other people don't feel abandoned because they feel abandoned. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that kind of what you were you're describing? That, the conversation that the egos are having, yeah. Yeah. That person would have to look at that like, okay. Yeah. Like, as, like let's go with divine masculine. Like, yes, protector, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's good. Like, your job is to make people around you safe the yeah. feminine energy around you safe your kids your mom your sister your girlfriend whatever it is yeah but if you're doing that out of an insecurity like if i don't do this they're going to leave me type situation yeah it's going to fall in space you're always there's going to be a there's a ceiling there and it's coming a lot faster than you think yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it's more of a floor that just falls out you're right, like, ah, yeah, yeah. what <laughs> like where wood am chipper. I? where yeah <laughs> yeah wood chipper. that's a much yeah that's a good analogy yeah, yeah i got thrown so that. But when you can say, like, I am a safe vessel for myself, mm. like, I can hold, like, this is, and we were talking about oh, this yeah. before we, we were mm -hmm. getting on the air, too, about a switch versus the dial. Yeah. So, like, if you're basically doing that with the intention of, it, that's a control thing. You're, yeah. You're trying to control, you're basically trying to control other people by making yourself appear valuable. Yeah. And so that is very fragile existence yes because like any little thing that's a very any, breakable uh, existence very breakable existence. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little gust of wind comes you're and, like, you're, ah, and you're gonna fall so your, your house is gonna so blow right over. yeah yeah <laughs> but when you can tap into like the rooted grounded version of that yeah the authentic transparent honest trusting loving mm. courageous version of that then mm. that is sustainable because that's it's all higher self stuff and yeah. when, we, when we get into our higher self like that's why, like, when you get into a flow state or when you get it, like, when things are going well and, like, when you find a job, you, when you find your purpose and your passion, you love it. Yeah. It doesn't feel like work is because it's not. It's just, yeah. it's, it's like you're in complete alignment with where you're supposed to be. And you're not mm. trying to manipulate, trying to control, trying to, your hands are off the wheel. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like you can't control the wind, but you can adjust your sails. Yeah. Like, to be in that it, place is it, amazing. I love that because I think that was, like, one of the questions I had, which is, like, you, when your noble ego gets in the way, like, that's, it's not like the, you know, I want to call it the militia. What, what was the word you'd use the, about the two egos, the noble okay, ego? Okay, so the noble ego is the one that, that guides you towards your higher self. The, yeah. The destructive ego is the one that is the heavy-handed safety. Like okay, yeah. Destructive. So the destructive ego, right? So I even see the noble ego as getting in the way for me because it's, it's so like it's <coughs> subtle. It's subtle, but it keeps me safe from stepping in. Like example, I was expressing my masculine power, my masculine leadership, 
And I literally learned this like a couple days ago. This is how recent <laughs> this is, right? You know, this is, this is so funny that my noble ego would get in the way that if I stepped into my fullness, like my motherfucking power, mm -hmm. that it made my wife shut down because I know for her, it created instability. It created almost like a force of like, boom, like, and that can be scary. Like, frankly, that can be scary for people around us. And so my noble ego would get in the way. And now the reason I bring that up is what was really in the way, if there was like this bubble, that bubble was, was or veil, was fear, right? The fear of my wife either abandoning me, leaving me, I'm losing my feminine steward, like who I deeply, deeply revere. If, if I step in my power, then she's going to have fear. Like she's going to react the way she does. The evidence comes back to me. Oh, I can't do that. So then I go back into my shell. And recently I went through a, a deep healing and recognized that this part of me was not being expressed, this masculine essence, like this leadership aspect. And because of that, I wasn't providing well and I wasn't protecting well. And, and like, frankly, when you step into that power, it can be scary for you and for others around you. And the reason I bring that up is my ego is in the way and I step through that, that veil of fear and towards a greater version of myself allowing for the the old self to break away accepting the fact that yeah like i'm not getting it right like i'm kind of shitty at things sometimes and it's okay and yeah it's okay and i fully accept that and now it's embodying on the other end what is that new potential what is that new version of self and i think going towards that it will kind of come back to the breakable self thing but like that's going towards higher self so the reason i i bring that up is kind of a do you agree with that that mentality right so like yours is destructive ego and noble ego but what i'm saying is noble ego doesn't necessarily guide us to our higher self but rather is still there as almost a justification of keeping us oh i'm doing the right thing i'm fortifying my coffers because you know i don't want to be completely broke right or i'm gonna make everybody else around me safe i'm gonna put pillows down around everybody else kind of thing does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so what i would say is that that experience that you had yeah was a move from destructive ego to noble ego mm. so like the, the actual the, the initial reaction that you had of that like remember that stepping in your masculine came yeah. from a destructive ego place yeah because it was fear-based mm -hmm. and so like your ego was like you know it's it's easier to do this yeah than it is to feel the fear and so it, it went from destructive, but as soon as you took ownership and noticed, like, okay, that was a shedding of a layer. That, mm. was, that was a, a snake's shedding its skin. Yeah. A, a, a metamorphosis of sorts. Yeah. Now you step into, like, you recognize now, you, 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 move, you shifted from the destructive ego to the noble ego. Now your noble ego is tapped into, like, okay, I need to, I need, there's a different way to do that, a better way to do that, mm. that is, makes my wife feel safer, that I show up safer. Okay. And now another thing about that, too, yeah. is that, we have to be careful to not take on other people's stuff. Yes. So if your wife got scared there, that there's something, yes, there's an ownership part in you. Yeah. But at the same time, like, what's making her scared about that? Like, right. Are you calling her forward? Or is she just saying something that's like, like you said, like, the power can scare people. Yeah. But the power can also call people forward. Yeah. Because, it, it, you know, again, I feel like life is two things. Yeah. Triggers and integration. Mm. Like there's a trigger there for you got triggered, she yeah. got triggered, that everyone got triggered. Everyone got triggered. Now you got to integrate that. Yeah. And once you once you the triggers kind of like dust settles, then you integrate that and yeah. like your relationship's stronger. She's a stronger person, you're a stronger person going forward. So let's call that if for just super easy purposes and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, like the trigger aspect, that's our fragility. That's our break. That like that's where we're broken. Like we're attached to outcomes or we're, we're in our ego. We don't know where to go. And we go into integration. We live as a greater version of ourselves. That's mm -hmm. the best way to describe it. You mentioned to me when we were chatting, uh, just even via text, that you have a, a system to go from one to the other. Can you walk me through that process on how you, yeah. both for yourself but, and coach others? Yeah, yeah. So a trigger is always, mm, how do I say this? The trigger is only bad if the trigger gets repeated. Mm. So if you get triggered and you and you respond out of fear or anger, lashing out, yeah, go get drunk, yeah, fall into depression, something like that, that trigger didn't do its job. 
Yeah. Or you didn't listen to the trigger properly. Yeah. But like, if you get triggered, you're like, whoa, I just got triggered. Like, yeah. What's going on there? Yeah. And like, I'll notice it. Like, I've done so much trigger work that it's like, I'm like, it happens all the time every yeah. day. Yeah. I'll be in a Starbucks and I'll see something that like makes me feel insecure for a second. I'm like, whoa, what was that? <laughs> But it's like it, the it, new price of a latte. Yeah. What? Six dollars. <laughs> Green tea went up fifty cents. Like, <laughs> I know. Ah, no, I, I can't. Ah, scarcity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then you like, and then we. So this is where this process comes in. So 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 important. Yeah, yeah. Immediately clear that trigger. Immediately mm. clear it. Shake, mm. like literally yeah. shake your body. Yeah. Take a breath. Yeah. Like a physiological response is the yeah. first step. So movement, like physical yeah. movement, and just like breathing, do whatever you need to do. Right. And yeah. so I take my clients through the process to get to the point where that actually works yeah because you can't just like you can't just you have to know what you're doing and the intention yeah. behind it but yeah. if i'm triggered like i can run my brain through a quick little like process of like yeah. okay that triggered me like what's real what's yes. a lie like yes. why is that tri- like yeah like reverse engineer it all the way back in a matter of 30 seconds yeah and then get back into alignment yeah so the, the process is clearing yeah so like clearing anything some people call it catch and release i just clear just clear it yeah like acknowledge it or become aware of it yeah say okay i'm triggered right now what is that doing for me yep and it happens everyone if you're listening to this podcast you're gonna think oh so i'm gonna be triggered all the fucking time like yes and it's beautiful as part of the process actually yeah. i would actually agree and to give a little bit of insight trigger is just a trauma response and trauma comes in many forms it's not what happens to us it's how we embody the experience what yeah. meaning because we were actually talking about this in the car on the way here we are meaning we're like always trying to put meaning to everything even these extra worldly experiences like past lives like what does this mean you know? yeah but all you got to do is just allow right like just just allow witness you know? and so when we're a child we have no prefrontal cortex a rational mind to recognize oh well when i'm dancing and my dad yells at me because i'm in the front of the tv it's not because he's trying to shut me down no. you know from expressing my authentic movement he just wants to watch the fucking Packer game, you know, like, like it's going to be all right, you know, like, and so, you know, when we experience these events, we store that in our biologic memory. That's literally how it's stored and it gets encoded into our DNA. It's forgotten up here. Remember Exactly. Exactly. And so like, we both have read that book, the body keeps the score and that is what happens. And then there's literally this part of our brain, the limbic system that gets in the way. It's the bridge. And when we go through these processes, and the reason I bring this up is because when you move from trigger, because trigger is just like the awareness of like a trauma. Response. I welcome triggers now. Yeah, at this point. yeah. Like, as I'm like, do I. Show me all my triggers so I can just clear them out. Yeah, like, I'm just, yeah, yeah. And like, once you do the big ones, the big ones are tough. Yeah, the big ones but, are. Yeah. But once you do the big ones, the little ones pop up, and it, it literally, it's like, okay, yeah, it's like breathing. It's like what? Yeah, like water. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's like, and that's another thing. Is yeah. like, so the untethered soul. Have you read that book? I have. Yeah, yeah. So he talks about the samskara, the Sanskrit mm. word for yeah. stuck energy. Mm. A trigger is a stuck energy is a trigger. Mm. And so like if you can mm. so like and this is one of the beauties of the life skill that I picked up from Bufo. Yeah. Just keep things free flowing. Like stream of consciousness journaling is so much more it's about teaching you how to free flow. Ooh. Like in meditation is like, the same way. Like yeah. when, we, when we're in meditation and we get stuck on like our to do list pops up and we're like, oh fuck no, I can't. Yeah. yeah. Then for five minutes, you're thinking about your to do list. Whereas if you just say, like, okay, hey, to do list, keep going. I like to have, uh, so I actually worked with a therapist because I have ADD. And, you know, like we were talking about that squirrel, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. that? <laughs> and getting things done was hard because I would try to fixate. I'd be like, oh, because I'm all over the place, I would try to fixate on the one thing and then shame myself because I wasn't getting something done. And when she taught me, Hey, just keep literally like a diary or a piece of paper next to you. And that's just going to be your brain dump. And anything that comes to mind, don't stop. I like, and I actually, now I think about it, I need to go back to this because I stopped doing this for a while. Because I was, you know, I was getting stuff done at that point. Yeah, yeah. It was so profound because I literally, like, if something came to mind, I would just write it down really quick and go right back to what I was doing. And at the end of the day, I actually not only got what I was going to get done, but so much other stuff without thinking about it and i was like moving fast yeah and you know like so much stuff and so like having a piece of paper that it's almost like you just write it out just you know just like uh-huh. put it on paper i love that because like stream of consciousness allow that flow you know yeah. when, when you clear when you allow it's that flow. also the actual act of writing with a pen and paper yeah is very important mm. like typing it into a computer is not going to cut it interesting 
like something about like it's just like it's our human body like something about like that direct line i call it i, I go third eye heart hand mm. so you're you you're aware of it and then you just you let it literally drop from your head and just like i imagine mm. it like a thought like as an entity as like yeah. a, a solid thing yeah yeah, like, yeah. A, like in that movie the um upside down or inside out oh inside out yeah, yeah. they have those the, like the cool memories movie. and stuff yeah right? like i imagine like a little like i give it a like a color and i just say okay dropping and i imagine out through my right arm under the paper that's super fast so we got to look up if you're listening and you can find some neuroscience on this because i actually agree with that but i have not found the science on that and i bet there is something to that i i've heard it so many times so many times i feel that though it, i actually enjoy a whiteboard like uh, put me in front of a whiteboard and I am the happiest dude. <laughs> I'm so I'm like yes, oh let's There's create so much, space. <laughs> so much space that I can move my yeah. body. You know, yeah, like yeah. we all over the place, which is so yeah. funny. You like that? Yeah. That, uh, all of a sudden in Philadelphia scene when he's got like he's like all cracked out <laughs> and he's like got the red lines so, everywhere. What a great show, by the way. Yeah. We, we could go there. Okay, so take me back. Once you're triggered, you're you you see you're aware of your trauma response. You do the clear. Which is, is that your somatic work, your body work? Yeah. Okay. I mean, so if, if it's one that, if, like, there's, I feel like we have these, there's levels to these triggers. Mm -hmm. Like, if we have ones that, like, always get us, like, for me, money is one of them. Like, yeah. Scarcity is so a many. big trigger for me. So many of us. Um, insecurity, like, yeah. less of a man. Yeah. Like, that's one. Like, when I get mm -hmm. around, like, super, super successful or whatever dudes, I've had experiences where it's like, oh, man, I'm like, I'm, I did a post about this. Like, I focus so much on what I am not yes that's the trigger for me what yeah. i am not yeah and then so mm. that now that i'm aware of like okay that's me focusing mm. on what i am not but like let's go back to what i am yeah like i mean look we're sitting here like doing a podcast about men's work like this is important work and like absolutely we are big like and yeah. so like if i stay in like the one i am mm. not of course i'm gonna get triggered all the time because absolutely i'm not anybody else like correct it's, if I can, if you're not it, even that figure that sits in front of me. No, I'm not. <laughs> right. I'm not. Like it's, it's a basically release that thought, release that that judgment, that comparison, that shame, whatever it is. Yeah. So this is why I welcome triggers, is because they show me these things, with like where I'm out of alignment. So the the clearing is either like breathe, a deep breath. Like yeah. when they say take a deep breath, mm -hmm. like everyone's like it's been told to us forever. I now know the importance of it. Mm. Like, take a deep diaphragmatic breath. Hold yeah. it at the top. Let it go at the bottom. Yeah. Just, it's really about, like, doing yeah. anything that shifts your physiology a little bit. Yeah. So, like, literally, like, a lot of people, I remember years ago, I was told, like, if you're walking and something triggers you, take three steps backward and then walk again. It basically reset that little period. So fascinating. So, I was listening to a guy named Dr. Feldman out of UCLA on the Huberman Lab podcast, mm. actually. Oh, he's By brilliant. the way, yeah, so good. Like, <laughs> if you guys like science, definitely dive into that podcast. Yeah, yeah. And he was talking about the reason you actually take these deep sighs subconsciously every, it's as it, I think it's five per minute, which is a lot. We don't think about that, but we, you know. Mm. And what's happening is that we have these little sacks of, we call the alveoli in our mm -hmm. lungs. And those, over time, because they're, they're lined with a, um, a liquid called surfactant, and those, over time, will start to slowly kind of like, kind of collapse just a little bit. And what happens is you don't, you're no longer able to get oxygen to cross that barrier. And so what they found after they were working with polio victims, or, you know, patients, rather. I don't want to say the word victim. There's no one's yeah. a victim. <laughs> polio. <laughs> yeah, Thank right. you. Go victim mentality real quick. Uh, <laughs> working with you. Yeah, no, right? What? What, I'm not a big, I'm not a victim. <laughs> they call me victim. <laughs> with, uh, with polio patients, is that they would put them in an iron lung. What they recognized is that they had a lot of mortality when they didn't periodically increase because they would just have them on a consistent yeah. rhythm. And when they would get one deep sigh every minute or every five minutes, their increase in lifespan was profound it was wow. like astronomical and this is like back in the early 1900s like when polio yeah. was obviously still around and what's very fascinating about that is that what we're doing is that we're expanding those alveoli and we're opening them back up to allow for the flow of oxygen so if you are like for instance triggered that's a physiological response we are experiencing and embodying in that moment some emotional an experience old, a, an, a old, past an old pattern yeah. yeah an old pattern neurologically and so by breathing in and you're opening up your lung centers, you're calming your nervous system, and you're actually expanding, allowing literally for oxygen, that, that light force energy from 
trees this, and, this trees yeah. and everything yeah because everything's connected you're i know a lot of people are like well i don't get it uh, but i'm a separate from that thing it's like no no, no. Yeah. You're like we all live in the same soup you yeah. know like it's like the um, trees feel pain we feel pain yeah, trees absolutely. breathe we breathe yeah. it's the what's the the I, f- I forget the the name of the guy that had this commencement speech that was like talking about fish and water i'm gonna i'm gonna blank on this somebody's gonna correct me on this but it's like the fish is like you know the old fish swims by the young fish and it's like how's the water and then the young fish are like what's water you know <laughs> And they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, 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 we're all in this soup that's connected to literally yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. And that soup is energy. And so anyway, we, we can come back to energy here in a second. But the main component is we expand lungs, we allow for energy to come in, and now our nervous system can regulate. And now we go, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And so by actually consciously choosing that, you're actually allowing yourself to regulate your nervous system. You're clearing, like you, were, you use that word clear, you're clearing your body. Clearing your space. You're, exactly, you're clearing your space. Creating space. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So after you clear, what do you what do you do next? So clearing, yep. aka creating space, a yep. lot, like bandwidth clearing. Yeah. So like the thing about the, the clearing and the, what's next is that we have bandwidth is finite. Yeah. And that's a it's a human experience. I mean, what's want, bandwidth? T- talk to me about. So that. bandwidth is like your ability to think, act, behave, respond, communicate. You're, yeah, yeah. Your level of re- present, reaction. Like your level yeah. of humanness, basically. Yeah. yeah. And so, but like if, if we have clogged up with these old stories, these old patterns, yeah. these triggers, like Entities, all these things, yeah. like that's like, you know, your bandwidth is full of that. And so like you have no room to yeah. react out of clarity. You basically, you're fight or flight or freeze yes. all the time. Yeah. So you have no space to react. So re- that's reacting. You, and yeah, yeah. When you have no space, it's like a quick knee jerk. Yeah. When you have the space, you're, you're the, reacting. You're re- acting on something that you're your pattern is right yeah. mm-hmm. and it's very dangerous very dangerous <laughs> but yeah. like when you can so then you remember the old computers they had like the the pcs had the disk defrag yeah. it's like all those little things and you compress it and you have all this space <laughs> that's what dude. yeah that's what this process does okay it's a d- giant wow. disk defrag that's so, so good so what what i what did, a great analogy I, yeah such an old concept <laughs> though like and when i say old that was only like 15 years ago I when know. i had to do that yeah. But yeah, I do remember doing so that. So like when your computer is like basically you have a lot of free space but it's it's clogged up and yeah, bogged kinda, down yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So all this clearing it does is it just creates the space in your bandwidth. So now yeah. the next step is alignment. Mm. And so now we have the space in the bandwidth and now you actually have the awareness of your triggers. You have the the tools, the somatic releases, the creating space, the breathing, the moving, yeah. the dancing, yeah. whatever it is, primal screaming. Yeah. You have all these tools. Yeah. So now you have the opportunity to align with your purpose. Your, I call it your North Star. Like that's mm. what my thing is. Like I want men to be on relentlessly on the path to the North Star all the time. How do they know that that's the North Star, not like some other star that's out there? <laughs> like, cause, cause I was on, like, for me now I know. Yeah. And this is it, right? This is an example of it. And there's like we we're talking about multi passionate, but I was everywhere. I was like bing bing oh, bing, yeah. bing 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 for a long time. Yeah. So how do you know? Energy, it's your energy yeah it's your you, so like we operate like what feels good what doesn't feel good yeah so it's a feeling it's a feeling and yeah. it's it, but you notice it like no if you like so yeah. say like this is another trigger example but like yeah. something that knocks you off your path that's you got triggered and knocked off your path like, yeah so if you're like op, say like an, i like the one to 11 scale because i like the number oh. 11 but yeah it's the one more than 10 i love it full send yeah <laughs> But yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> let's go. So one to like you're operating at like an eleven one day. Yeah. Like, fucking did my morning routine. I was in the pool. Like yeah. And then you walk into a place and it's like oh fuck. Like I'm yeah. at a four. Yeah. Like what happened here? Yeah. Like why? What does this place remind me of? Something like mm. is there somebody like something something what what happened? Yeah. So, you know like now that's a micro on a macro level. Mm. Like if you get depressed or you get anxious a lot, or yeah. you feel unfulfilled or angry, like these, these yeah. things crop up, Yeah, it means that you're, mm. you, you're out of alignment, you're out of whack. Yep. You, you're off track, you lost your path to your North Star. Yeah. So now you have to, you just realign. And mm. so when you clear away, like yeah. when you handle all those big, those traumas, and those stories, and those programs, and yeah. the, whatever else, it, and, and however that shows up in your life, depression, anxiety, addiction, whatever it is. Yeah. When you clear that yeah. stuff, you have this defrag, 
Yep. You have all this bandwidth, free bandwidth now that you can put in whatever you want to put in there. Yes. This is where like my, my movement is called the full fuck yes frequency. I love that. So this the full is where, fuck yes frequency. That's so good. <laughs> this, is, so th good. this is where you get the opportunity <laughs> to, to tap into that. Like, yeah. What's a full fuck yes for you? Yeah. More of that, please. Yes. And then, because now the reason that this works mm. is because you're not coming from insecurity, fear, trauma, dangerous masculinity anymore. You're yeah. coming from safe masculine you're coming from divine masculine you're coming from mm. love from connection from peace from grounded behavior like yeah. and this is where true alignment happens yeah because you now you've cleared when you're operating from those traumatic places like those bad places yeah you're not going to get it of course you're going to be all over the place because you have no fucking clue what you want right when you clear that and you like you have all this space in your body this range this bandwidth you can like okay this is what i want like i want to have a house in tulum and I want to have a house in LA. Awesome. I want to drive a Ferrari. Cool. I want to speak yeah. Spanish. Awesome. I want to go to Mars. Awesome. Yeah. Like, let's fill this this massive bandwidth. Let's yeah. get in true alignment of your North Star. Is yeah. what do you want to? How do you want to die? That's your North mm. Star. When death comes, mm. how, where do you want to be? That's your North Star. I like that actually because for me, for the longest time, and I think all men are in speaking to men like very, very directly right now. All men have this drive to service. And I, I feel like it's part of the masculine structure. Mm -hmm. And not I feel. I know. It's just, it is. It's <laughs> yeah. part of the masculine structure. To dive deep into a, a work and steward that. That is who we are. That's our king within. Mm -hmm. That we are of service. And we are always seeking that. And if we're allowing for the life around us, like essentially society, to dictate who we need to be, go to the school, get this job, get this car, get this yeah. money, get this house, mm -hmm. you know. If we're allowing society to dictate that to us and we just start to push down, like, nope, nope, don't listen to that. I'm not going to be an artist. Got to be this lawyer. You know, like, <laughs> we push down. We are, that alone is enough pressure to make a man explode, which I was there. You know, yeah. I was like, I did all those things, went to graduate school, did it, you know, I'm going to call myself a doctor and these, you know, like, right. <laughs> And I used to claim that shit. I used to be like, yeah, I'm this man like, right. to create egoic significance because I thought yeah. I could win if I had yeah. this. You know, I'm powerful if I am this man. <laughs> and, in right. and in reality, what happens is that that pressure just pushes us down. And by exploding, literally like going through that somatic release, what you're talking about, like, and if people don't know, somatic, you know, means body. It's Latin for body. Soma, our experiences live in our body. And by clearing that, now we have all this, this ability to feel something totally new, something totally fresh. And you don't have to feel that, that feeling of fear or shame or guilt or grief or what if or whatever that thing is. You don't have to feel that. Like, it's like getting rid of all the noise. Cleaning your room. That's an example. Is Clean your room. Oh, and then, and then all of, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it feels fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, we all know what feeling is. In my room, my brain calmed down. Yeah, yeah, you're what? right, right. <laughs> that happened. Like oh. you know, like actually, funny. Yesterday, I was at my desk, and I had my you know all my podcast stuff set up because I was doing a Zoom call with somebody, and I'm like, man, this desk is like fucking mess, cluttered. and and it was cluttered. And there's papers and receipts and, and and these things. And usually, I like to keep a clean desk. And I just remember thinking, like, I got so much fucking work to do. I don't have time. And then my intuition was like, nope. Stop, <laughs> clean this desk. And I was like, oh, okay. So I did. Oh, you know, and then it's like clear. And then I'm like, oh, and then I was super hyper focused. I was able to get yeah. more shit done in like a quarter of the time. Yep. And th that is go to the clearing first. Okay. Go to the clearing Inside first. Inside out game. Absolutely. Inside out game. Yeah. Inside out. So you align, right? So now alignment. So correct me if I'm wrong. Alignment for you is is tuning in. Like if I had to think about not think. Let's get out of our head. Let's get into our body. <laughs> I've had a feel into what's right now, right? And for me, I remember thinking, I need to find my purpose. Also a worthiness issue. I would always try to jump to the end result, oh. you know, right? Instead of just being like on this little stone. Like the analogy for me switched in my head, again, very recently. It's funny how like recently... <laughs> I've been learning for so many years and like just recently. By the way, like, I'm admitting that it's recently, noble ego. Yeah. We, I want to say like 10 years ago. Like, yeah, no, yeah, it was right. like 10 days ago. Yeah, no, it was like, <laughs> it was like three weeks ago, right? Yeah. Actually, it was, I think, like three weeks on this specific lesson, which is stop looking to the very, very end. Like stop trying to create a company or a mission or whatever. 
just like what's right now what step are you on what stone and actually i saw a river Mm. and it was foggy and i couldn't see the other side of the river and i knew i was on a stone like you ever like hop across stones to get so you don't get wet it was like that and i just like hopped on to the next stone i'm like i'm just gonna be here for a second oh i'm gonna hop to that stone and i can't go backwards either and i can't jump too fast forwards because then i'll I'll stumble and i'll fall in and then you get all wet and you don't want to get all wet (laughs) but what i recognize is like oh like my purpose is now my purpose is here my purpose Mm. is is right in this experience and to express and to be and just Mm. not worry about the editing not Mm. worry about you know like when is this going to go up you know it's like just not even worry about what we're going to talk about next i know we're talking about right now i know like what (laughs) what are we gonna talk about no like don't worry about any of that just be like and so so the purpose doesn't have to be something profound it can Mm. just be like hey i can sit with another man and i can just just sit now yeah. we're on an audio, so we don't want to just sit with no noise. <laughs> no, that's awkward. <laughs> yeah, no, then it gets weird. Dead silence. No, yeah. no, right? I have sent audio messages when I'm like, my mind is blown to people, and it's like, this is an audio message with no noise, and it's yeah. just like a minute of nothing. You I know, know. And I, I want to like, like delete it and resend. Like, I know. I'm yeah. like, I don't just say right now. It's so good. It's yeah. so good, right? Yeah. So, okay, going back, we, we were talking about alignment mm-hmm. and just being in the now, just being in like the present moment. That can be your purpose yeah. for now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Again, it's never not now. Yeah. Right. And so, right. And I just forgot what I was gonna say. That's all good, man. Squirrel. We were talking <laughs> so, about. Well, I I kind of so, I kind of stole your rhythm. It's all right. Which was which was um you were talking about we clear the body we align you are yeah. aligning to your north star, and I asked the question how how do you know right okay yeah. so it's funny you said how do I know yeah because what I'm about to say is let go of the how ah. Uh, like when we think about that end result our big thing is like okay so i have to do this this and then three years i'm going to do this and then five years i'm going to do this yeah and so you're for one you're setting you're most likely setting yourself for failure yeah because second of all you're closing yourself off to all the possibilities Mm. when you attach yourself to how like say okay i want to be a millionaire awesome how are you going to do that you're probably going to say start a company make money make a hundred thousand dollars this year Make five hundred thousand dollars next year, and then I'll make a million dollars the third year. Yeah. Or you could walk out of this restaurant right, we're in right now and yeah. find a bag on the street with a million dollars in it. Right. But what if you just like, no, that's not how I'm supposed to do it. Like I see a bag, and eh. like oh, it's someone else's million dollars. Like no, that's how it was supposed to happen. Like yeah. when you can let go of the how, mm. that's when magic ha- happens. Let go of the how, and and like you said, show up in the present moment and do what the present moment requires you to do. Yeah. That's it. And if we want to get even deeper, I don't want to, I don't want to take away from that point because that, that point was really powerful. But I always love to ask a question because I, I had to ask myself this. Why do I want the million dollars? Oh, what, weird. Right? Now we're going to get into the weeds. You know, like, I, I have was a like, great analogy for that. Oh, one. fuck. Cool. Well, I want security. It's like, oh, or I want to feel stable. Yeah. It's like, well, why do I want to feel stable? Because I, I want to feel loved. Right? I want to feel like stable. I want to feel secure. I want to feel like, but what am I really looking for in the security? It's like, oh, a nice home with my wife and my kids. I don't want us to feel like pleasure and joy and, and connection and love. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm just going to go to love. I'm just going to do that. Fuck the million dollars. Don't worry about the money. The money yeah. will come. If love is present in that context, whatever happens, happens. Even if I'm broke, even if I, you know, got a less than, and I have been here, uh, I had negative like, twelve hundred dollars in my account this is like a few years ago yeah i remember when i went to the grocery store because i had you know i had to pay rent and mortgage and all these things i went to the grocery store and i couldn't buy groceries mm. that was a fucking moment been there that was a fucking moment yeah and i had kids at home man <sighs> dude not been there <laughs> dude yeah and that That's... i remember that moment that talk about break right like i was so enraged and i my trigger was like lash out you know, well, you weren't enraged. You just like enra- I was so ra- yeah. rage was like rage is an easy cover oh. up, and you hadn't been mad at yourself. But yeah. like really, what you were feeling was like I am less of a man. I was deeply, deeply embarrassed. Yes. Like deeply yes. shame. The show much shame. So much shame. So much shame. It's and such an evil fucking. It's so, it's crazy because and if you can like announce your shame, I think that's the first step. Well, I. Just yesterday, I, yeah. I saw this quote years ago, and yeah. I saw it again just yesterday. Shame dies when the stories get told in safe places. Ooh, shame dies when when, when the stories, because shame is like I have a story that I'm not worthy because I have my twelve hundred dollars in the bank account and Ooh. I have kids at home, 
that shame when you tell that story in a safe place the shame died mm. in the presence of an empathetic wisdom healing can occur i heard that literally Same yesterday that was, that was a quote said differently Beautiful. that is so funny i read that quote literally yesterday and i don't know who Beautiful. quoted that i apologize if, yeah. if you said that <laughs> listening this, this is the importance of men's work yes. those two quotes are yes. why men's work needs to happen <sighs> fucking powerful that's exactly it that is honestly because I created my own men's network for myself yeah. without knowing really what I was doing. I just, I was like coming from ego thinking we're going to be even more significant <laughs> and we're going to do all the things and win, win all the wins, yeah. you know? Yeah. And those two men have led me into the deepest, deepest parts of my soul. And we don't necessarily meet regularly anymore, but every time I get together with them, it's, they're there. Yeah, they're there. And Absolutely. And you guys did the work and cleared a bunch of shit. So much shit. Now you're, it's like you're, you're off on your own, spreading your wings now. Yes. Because, you know, like it's, it's the perfect example is like you go from this to this. <sighs> yeah. That's, I even take a side. Just, <sighs> that feels so good. My inner child is like, yeah, we all are. are. Yeah. We're fragile. So, but, yeah. But like my higher self, my, the man that I am now is like this. And like yeah. I, a lot, like daily, want to, Go back to here. Yeah. And I got to remind myself, no, yeah. that's not it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't serve at all. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's so good. Yeah. That's so good. All right. So we were talking about alignment. Yeah. So get, in, getting yeah. into alignment. And yeah. I have a great mantra for how is I actually did. I love acronyms. So I did. <laughs> Me too. It's uh, good. You're going to like this one. <laughs> IDK, IDC, IDM. Okay. I don't know. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. How? Hmm. Mm. And it's it, drop, it, it's yeah. scary as fuck to let go of the how because yes. masculine we we do we yeah. we want to plan yeah. like yeah. we want to fix yeah like to let go of the how but like I have the lesson never it's like every time I go to the gym when I'm in a bad mood it blows my mind how much it helps every time every time every time I let go of how it blows my mind how much easier things get always it's so crazy it's so nice and I, it, like my dad had this med like I was a tennis player growing up yeah. Uh, got like high level tennis player, professional tennis player for college. Yeah. But my dad had this thing like when I was on the court, I make unforced errors. Like, because I was like, the, I was the full send tennis player. Like, I wanted to hit a winner on every shot. Like, just, oh, yeah, yeah. Hit, I hit every ball as hard as I could. Yeah. And my dad's like, you make so many unforced errors. Yeah. I'm like, but I was like hitting the ball hard. And he's like, <laughs> it's like the two by four. He's like, how many times do you have to get hit in the head with a two by four before you say that hurts? And this is the same thing. Like, all these lessons, like, I'm that like hard headed, whatever you want to call it, like yeah. stubborn. Yeah. Like, I need to get hit in the head a lot. Yeah. And it's getting less. Like, I'm getting better at it because I, I have evidence now. Yes. And I, I can pay attention to evidence. That's so funny. But it, it's, I, it's just amazing what happens when you actually. I feel like men, too, especially, we, we are a special kind of stubborn. <laughs> we, we have, like, this, like, this gear in us that's like, I can, I can keep going. <laughs> And it's, it's actually those moments in life, and we're kind of coming back to the idea of being unbreakable, those moments in life where we actually are broken that are the best. We always talk about that, too. I, I feel that those moments, like me not being able to pay for groceries that day, was the, one of the best moments of my life because <laughs> it, it finally brought forward something that like I was deeply ashamed about. And here's the interesting thing, too. <clears throat> I wasn't even able to process. I didn't have the knowledge or the wisdom on how to process the shame in that moment. Mm -hmm. But the gig was up, right? The that, gig's up, brother. You know, that was you're, the turning you're point. broke as a joke. You know, yeah. time to fucking change this. And I even one of the, the people that I was ashamed of, to, like, about, essentially, was my father-in-law. My father-in-law had done very well for himself. Mm -hmm. And I always felt so much pressure to live up to this expectation to provide for his daughter, because I deeply revere my wife, and I deeply revere the feminine. And I felt because of this sort of this innate thing in men that I had to provide to the same level, but I wasn't, I wasn't there and I couldn't possibly be there in where I was. And when I say done well, I'm like, I'm like done very well. Mm -hmm. Right. Very yeah. well. And so every time I would be around, I would like try to not feel shame. I would try to not feel like I was the outsider. I'm not that. Right. Yeah. Like that I'm, I can be, you know, and, and I remember one day, like I was asking him business advice because he was successful in business. And, and I was telling him like the story and my word of like cash flow. I keep coming back, oh, I'm just overcoming this cash flow. And he's like, he's like, man, you need a pattern interrupt. Like, mm. I was like, he like called me out and I was like, Grr, like, Grr, <laughs> he, like, moment. And I was like, oh, fuck. But here's the thing is because he's been through it too. 
he was able to hold that for me. Trusted resource. And exactly. And because I felt so much shame in relation to him, his level, and how I was showing up for my wife and, and my children, right? Like for him to say that without any sense of like, you're wrong. He just was like, yeah, you, you just need this. And I was like, that was deeply healing. Even in that well, moment. I feel it right now. Yeah. Like, I feel it was like, healing. oh, dude, like, I don't have to live up to this expectation because he doesn't have any expectation of me. He knows exactly what I've experienced because he went through it and he now is living this life. And yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> oh, like, boom, like yeah. explosion moment. Yeah, and yeah. so now I was like, oh, okay. I don't have to try to jump through hoops. I don't have to do anything. And, you know, for him, he probably doesn't remember that moment. It was just a normal conversation for, for him. But for me, it was like, boom, profound, yeah. profound moment, which is powerful. So let's swing back through. Okay. We were talking clearing. about like, we have clearing. Clearing. Yep. Yeah. And we have a lot. So once you clear, then, yep. you, then you become clear. Yep. You're a clear channel. So you can see clearly. Yeah. And you yep. can see what you want yes. and what you don't want. Yeah. The filter is alive. And right then you al align so to that. So then you align mm -hmm. with how you want to die, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. So that means what, what's going to happen between now and when you die? Yeah. Make it fucking count. Mm. Be on that path relentlessly. Be about it. Be about that. the higher version of yourself. I love that. And if, you, if something is a no for you, say no. Mm. Something is a yes for you, say yes. Full fuck yes frequency. Yeah. Stay Full in there, yes, man. Yeah. Like, if it's a no, say no. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Just make sure it's not coming from a fear, anger, resentment, insecure place. Yeah. The third thing is receiving. Ooh. So we talk about it like Ooh. now we see this how we want to die. Like I want millions and millions of dollars and four cars and five houses and whatever else you want. Yeah. That's cool. You yeah. say you want that. Yeah. What's gonna happen when it starts showing up though? You're gonna reject it. Yeah. Because you well, if you've done the work, yeah, you'll be able to receive it. Yeah. But you have to do this work. You have to clear your somatic body of all the things that your head doesn't know about mm. in order to receive it. Because your head, you can like this is the thing, like you say, like and this is one of the reasons for the longest time I had such a problem with goals mm. because I was so disconnected right here. Yeah. Door chakra was blocked. Yeah. So nothing communicates. Ooh. Mm. And so I like had these goals and, but like I would like, I'd get close to them and then my somatic body, which I didn't know about at the time. Nah, that's not safe. Yeah. A hundred thousand dollars. That's not safe. Yeah. You know, like $20,000 a month. That's not safe. Yeah. But my head's like, no, 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 we want that. Your body's, body's like, oh, uh -uh, fool. Yeah. We do not want that. Because yeah. that means, and for a long time, it meant to me that I would like, I was, if I had that much money, I'd fall back into addiction. I'd start doing cocaine all the time. Mm. And that, I, I got over that story. So I had to like, you have to like oh. clear all these. So now we, it's almost like you go back to clearing. But now that yeah, you, yeah. you did all the big clearing in the beginning. Mm. So now you're like, these things mm. start to show. I always say, yeah. if you want good shit to fall into your lap, you have to clear your lap and then put your lap where good shit falls. I love <laughs> I'm just going to sit with that for a second. That was, I love that because. You, so if you're sitting here, like, you're, yeah, yeah, your yeah, like you're like full of shit and it's like the good shit's falling over here, but you're like, over and here, you're, you're like, like, oh, I see all that good shit. That's nice. There's a myth, which is the Fisher King. Have you, have you heard of the myth? The Fisher uh, King myth? I've, yes, but tell me about it. So the Fisher King is, he has an arrow through his testicle. Right, mm -hmm. he has an arrow through his power source, and he is. This is the, actually the original King Arthur myth, right? The original. So the Fisher King is at a banquet, and the banquet has, you can imagine, the abundance of food. Everyone there in the entire kingdom is eating and enjoying and like really receiving the abundance, but he can't consume. He can't receive his abundance, even though it's his kingdom. And he sends young Parsifal out on the adventure and Parsifal being the hero essentially like the sort of the, the young ego mm -hmm. of the same individual psychologically goes out and is he's undersized much like Frodo you know Got like it. undersized yeah. young nubile doesn't know anything has to go out on these great adventures and meets these different knights and has to either work with these different knights like the black knight the white knight the red knight and either kill these knights or needs to start to essentially embody these knights right uh -huh. these these new powers and only until parsifal goes and goes on the great adventure that he comes back with the antidote which essentially is fullness love Got it. right and then the fisher king can fully embody his power and and receive and actually sit and enjoy the banquet receive like you were saying mm -hmm. and enjoy the banquet of of the feast yeah and I feel that what you were describing about your pattern, about money, 
mine almost almost exactly just the story I would tell myself was just a little bit different, which is if I receive this, I can't hold this because I'm yeah. not worthy. Mm-hmm. Or if I hold this, then I'll be perceived as greedy or selfish. And if I'm greedy and selfish, then I am separate from other because I know I love other, but I can't hold this money. Yeah. And if I hold this money, then then people will leave me and I'll I'll be abandoned. Right. Like well, I won't for be loved. me. It was that I'll stand out. Yeah. And then get rejected. Yes. And yeah. So as and again, it's kind back of the to, same. That was yeah. almost exactly yeah, yeah. the same as mine. That's funny. And so this as a kid who's scared of himself, like yeah. doesn't want to be seen, feels less than. Yeah. To be seen is like all the shame. You all you see is my shame. Yeah. So like anything I do to stand out or like put myself in a position of being seen. Yes. Like yeah. Yeah. So the thing we have to look at is to receive is like why are you holding on to these things like people that are like overweight yeah like part of the reason they have a hard time getting skinny or yes. getting in shape yeah is because they feel safe being overweight yeah people that are broke feel safe being broke people yes. with depression feel safe with depression absolutely people with epigenetics i completely believe that like we hold on to all these diseases because they give us security oh absolutely i mean we, and science has proven this that like over and over and over, and over, yeah. and over again and, and you know like, like it, it, it's here's the funny thing anytime a scientific journal comes out that has a profound paradigm shift, it takes about 30 to 50 years for the social norm to change. Yeah. Even though science, the observation itself is saying, this is the observation, it's repeatable, it's fact, this is happening, um, like Bruce Lipton's work. Yeah. Like, it's still, like you had to say, I believe, because it's like, well, what if the listener doesn't no. believe what I believe? If I say, I believe you should take Lexapro for depression, they'd be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, right? Because, like, like you, social, believe you should. Exactly, yeah. social norm, but epigenetics, absolute, like, truth. Like, we know, like, it's, like, been, it's, it's been proven. Scientific fact. Yeah, like, yeah. it's just, it's a thing. Yeah. And so, like, why do we hold on? Like, why do you, like, if someone, whatever it is, like, anything that holds someone back, like, you're holding on to that. Why are you holding on to that belief or that weight, like, yeah. You can't get someone to go to the gym. Like, yeah. there's so much more about going to the gym than going to the gym. So much. People think it's a. People put the gym in like having it all, cut bucket. Yeah. And so like, oh, I can't have it all. So like, the easiest thing to cut is the gym. Yeah. Or eating well. Yeah. Or like, body work or yeah. cold baths. Like, yeah. These things are not. They're not accepted normally yet. So. Yeah. They fall by the wayside. But what it really is is this person. It's like the lottery winners that go broke. It's not that they did bad with money. I mean, that's the effect. That's the symptom. Yeah. But the, the, the root cause is that they don't feel comfortable there. Yeah. They're holding on to like, they're holding, because their grandparents' parents were poor, their parents were poor, they're poor. Generational healing needs to happen. Yeah. Like they, so they, they'll it, spend a bunch of money in Vegas and well, because, blow it or whatever, however, yeah, and however that, it leaves their hands. Right. Leave. And they can do that and they can also save money. Yeah, but they it doesn't feel right to them. So yeah. they're just gonna it's gonna it's basically that energy. They're not able to hold the energy of that money. Yeah, it's a, they're just it's gonna pass right through them. Yeah, because they they it's just a, like for me, depression was like that. Yeah, like and I still to this day, like have these moments where I'm like, I would love to just close all the blinds, lay around and do nothing all day. Yeah, because I get then what it is is like something I have to do that day scares me a little bit. Yeah, it's like. But what, and so, like, my thing is now, like, no, okay, so you get up earlier. Yes. Or I make myself get up and do the thing, go in the pool, yep. go to the gym. Like, when you feel that coming on, just I just show up. Get out of your comfort zone. Just, well, just, or just, because I know now. Yeah. That, like, i getting out of the house and just doing something, and I show up, and yeah. it turns out better than I thought it would, and more evidence. Yes. That, like, doing this, do it the right way. Yeah. But so people hold on to disease. They hold on to stories. They hold on to all these things. So. In order to receive, you have to, this is why I say I kind of go back to the clearing. Yeah. It's like, okay, we cleared away all that stuff, and we did that, and we ha- now we have the tools. Yes. We practiced it in a safe place with big things. Yep. Now, you're going to need to clear some more stuff constantly. Yep. But it's little things, and yep. it's easy. Yeah. And so, but like, when you talk about what you want, and it comes, and you either like, this is why I had it, I was at Sacred Sons, and one of the leaders was like, I don't believe in self-sabotage, and I'm like, What? That's my whole like basis. <laughs> I've been and, doing that for so, every, yeah. That's and the I, reason I do what I do. Right. Like that's why I don't have anything nice. <laughs> and so or I didn't used to anyways. So I, I pulled him aside. I was like, you gotta tell me. Yeah. He's like, okay, here's the deal. He's like, it wasn't self sabotage. I'm like, but I had this amazing girl and 
we broke up and I was heart I did this thing and Evidence. she left. He's like, no, no. He's like, yeah, you had it, but what happened was is that you weren't that person yet. Yeah. So you didn't sabotage anything. Yeah. You just weren't the person to hold that yet. Yeah. So you can't sabotage anything. You just haven't become the person. That, you haven't built the somatic body yeah. to hold that thing, yeah. to receive that. Yeah, and it's not in your nervous system. If we want to talk about somatic body, right? Yeah. Like your nervous system has to literally change neurologically and yeah. fundamentally, like your mind-body component. Because mm -hmm. mind-body is one. I don't. Like, I don't mean, yes, they're different words, but it's the same. Yeah. It's like they're directly linked. And I was going to bring that up, too, because, and I'm glad you, you mentioned that. When I've received large sums of money, even in, the, in my recent history, like last year, it still felt like, oh, I can stop now. I don't have to, I don't have to keep going, right? You know, like, yeah. I'm safe now. And then I'm like, because I was doing all that work, clearing and aligning, clearing and aligning, clearing, and then I received a sum of money that I was like, evidence there it is ha 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 i can use a law I'm of attraction right. i have i have made manifest <laughs> that which i chose i am a great manifester yeah, yeah. and um and then it went away over the course of about seven months yeah and because I, I just sort of like took my foot off the gas and now to be fair i've done a lot of work since then and now i'm like all right what's next what's next well it's you also know? about like if I look at that, because yeah. I've had this exact same experience, yeah, the things I did to get that, one, were either not really in alignment with me receiving that. And so now, many times going through that cycle, like now I've gotten to the point where like the things I know to do that, to receive that, to hold that, yeah. are super dialed in. Yes. Like it's not 17 things in my morning routine, it's like yeah. three. Yeah. You know, because yeah. like doing 17 things every morning is okay. Yeah. But like no. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not sustainable. Right. Cuz then like the more thought you have to put into it, yes. the less likely it's going to happen. The, yeah. And the thought becomes like friction. So I think it was James Clear in Atomic Habits who talked about friction. Mm. The two ways to use friction. One is like decrease the friction between you and what you want or increase the friction between you and what you don't want. Mm. So use the example of like someone trying to lose weight will put like the chips and the candy in yeah. the garage in the cupboard where they have to get on a ladder to go get it. Yeah, makes them like ex exponentially less likely to go get the chips and the, the candy. Yeah, yeah. Or if you want to, if you want to go to the gym, he says the one thing is like put your shoes right next to your bed, or put like make yeah. the, the first clothes yeah. you put on are your gym clothes. Setting up your environment, less essential. Just yeah, like removing less friction, friction yeah, between yeah. the things yeah. you want. So this mm -hmm. this is like receiving. So like these stories, these things we hold on to, there's friction there. Yes. So remove the friction. Your lap is getting closer to the place where shit falls. Yeah. Because if if you have the less friction, the less resistance, the more sustainable. Yeah, I love that. That is, and what you just described too in your car form. I'm going to call it the car formula because it's so good. <laughs> it's your vehicle, right, to get yeah, you to yeah, where you want to yeah. go. Is cause that's really what it is, right? You're constantly going back. So like the receivership is not actually. There's no how to or doing. It's just like do step one and step two, and just do step one. Yeah. Honestly, you're going to know when you're in step two when you're just feeling like yeah yeah i can sit in this present moment and i can talk and it's okay i don't have to write a book i don't have to be a keynote speaker right now i can just like have a conversation right yeah. with sam yeah. you know and like we can connect and we can just enjoy and we can and we can work through this you know like this experience yeah and so honestly the only work then is is step one it sounds like right you know it's like be okay with how whatever outcome needs to happen knowing that the R, the step three is like, it'll fall in your lap because you'll align yourself to something. And then all of a sudden, like you were saying, like it could just be on the street. Like I got, a, again, random manifestation. My bank called me, this is last year. And they're like, hey, you bought a, a financial product 10 years ago and we want to return that money. And we, you know, come to find out there was some loss and damage in that and some interest. So we want to return that money plus that. I was like, great. I do remember this product. I probably paid $600. It was like a silly something like credit defense or something, you know, like yeah. uh, whatever. And turns out that was fraudulent and the SEC came down on my bank. And so they needed to return that plus interest. And so I got $12,000 back. <laughs> after Nice, nice return nice on investment. Nice return on investment, <laughs> right? And I was like, but that was unexpected funds. Yeah. And in a moment too where kind of everything was shut down, it was perfect. It was exactly what I needed. And I felt like. Fuck it. That was like the, one of those moments where I was yeah. like, oh, I have made manifest yeah, yeah. that which look I want. Me. You know, yeah. look at me. Yeah. I'm doing it. But in reality, I cleared out a lot of, of money shame. And yeah. 
and money guilt and money blame and, and all these things around money relative. And that came to me now where I'm stepping fully into for me, this is for my, my receivership. I wanted to receive because uh, I, I did want to receive just money. I just like, that was like the start. Like, I just want to know, Hey, can I, can I experience money? Now it's like actually receiving with a little bit of a, an asterisk through my own hands, through my own work. And not to say I'm self-made because nobody's self-made. We're all like, you're making me right now. You're molding me with your words and your wisdom, right? We're like we're no one, street, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no one is self-made. I, I used to think that, but no <laughs> well, one is. We're all connected. You can't be self-made. Correct, right. <laughs> but what I knew is, okay, now is time to receive through the, essentially like stacking, right? Stacking an infrastructure. Maybe mm. I start with a podcast. Then maybe, you know, I do feel called to write a book. So I'm going to write a book. Right. And so I actually have a book outlined and then it's like, okay, well, once I do that, then it's like, well, I have this course that I'm about to, to launch this event. And then maybe after that, it's a, it's a brotherhood or it's a something, you know, it's like, it just creates stacking. And like, I don't have to worry about like step 11, mm. just worry about step one. Like yeah. let's have a conversation. I love that. Cause if you, if you worry about step 11 and you have one through 10, yeah. Like, first of all, you don't even know what step two is going to look like, really. Exactly. Like, you think you do. Yeah. Like, you might have a plan. And it probably, it'll look something like that. But you go through step one, it's like building a program. Yeah. Like you build a program, and then you take someone through it, you're like, oh, it's all set. Yes. You know, you, until you actually go through the steps, and myself included. Like, yeah. Like, going to do something like Sacred Sons, or Ayahuasca, or Bufo, mm. whatever it is. Yeah. Like, you think you know. Yeah. You really fucking don't. Yeah. Like you just like we think we know what's next though. Like we know next next I'm gonna, we're gonna sit here and talk for the next fifteen minutes. Like yeah, or an asteroid could hit the Earth. <laughs> I mean, it's not possible. To, not, not to be. Like, That'd be a hell of a way to go. Uh, yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> we're just doing a podcast it's and uh, Armageddon. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> but I'm, dun, dun, dun. Like, it's a very extreme way to make a point. But <laughs> yeah, no. the point is, is like we really don't know yeah. what's next. Yeah, you know, the perfect example. Like I was 2015. I was in an AA meeting in San Francisco, California. Yeah. And just a normal day. And the meeting topic was like, I'm, just, I'm not into this topic. I'm yeah. ending my day. I'm tired. I want to go home. Yeah. Left the meeting early, walked out. Got a call from the Asheville Police Department. Like, is Sam Morris? Like, yeah. Um, your father's passed away. Uh, like, no, like, I didn't, that was just, like, no idea what the, like, literally, like, one second later, I didn't know what was coming. Mm. And like, and we do have plans, and like yeah. most of the time things do go according to plan, or at least kind of. Yeah. But like, there's gonna be moments in your life. Yes. And you just mm. don't know. And this is the thing about like step one through eleven. Like, you do step one, do step one to the best of your abilities. Do yeah. step one well. Yeah. Not even the best of your abilities. Just do it well. Yeah. Step two will reveal itself. Step three yeah. will reveal itself, and step eleven. But if you set out with the intention of like, this is what step eleven must look like. Yeah. Probably not gonna look I, I want to touch on what actually going back to what you just described about getting that phone call because mm -hmm. I think this is actually really important and, I, and then we can kind of wrap it up from there but the car formula that you just gave is like really 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 good and oftentimes we as men or any individual listening we're always thinking about well I'm gonna move towards a potential and serve a higher purpose and live a fulfilled life and do these things but what we don't recognize and this is, you know, I'll even raise my hand because I just sort of like, oh, shit, you're so right, is there's always going to be that moment in life where we get a phone call. We, you know, there's a diagnosis. There's a death. There's something that just stops you in your tracks. And if you're doing the work almost like before you get to those moments, because those are breaking moments. Those are re-identifying moments of, well, fuck, if I'm not a son, anymore right my father's gone who am i right or i lost a business and it was like if i'm not this man who am i mm. it's such a powerful moment to use what you're just describing right the car formula but in reality we're using the car formula not just to get us to the ferrari and the house on the hill even though we think quote unquote we think we're going there but we're actually going as a way to almost like break ourselves to break ourselves of our own ways and our own patterns so that when those moments come, because they will, everyone experiences those moments. Yes. Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> everyone. Everyone. Yeah. That we, the word fortified is wrong. It's, we're unbreakable, right? Like we can't be broken by those moments. Mm -mm. And because we are allowing ourselves to crack 
and break and letting the light in and growing and crack and break and letting the light in and growing. And we're going through the process of evolution naturally as a human, metamorphosizing from yeah. caterpillar to butterfly, Alchemizing, back into caterpillar yeah. to butterfly. Like we're just constantly going through new levels of identity, releasing our ego, shedding that skin, whatever analogy yeah. is right. But we're allowing for the process of breaking. We're allowing for the process of breaking. Oh, there's a crack. Yep. I accept that this is a crack. I don't identify as this person anymore. And just clearing a line and clearing a line and clearing a line. And yes, you're receiving all the way. But then there's that moment of deep fracture, like big, big moments, yeah. a divorce. It's like the three Ds, I feel like death, you know, divorce and, and diagnosis, you know, like, so true, man. you know, like yeah. those are like the main components of really breaking. Yeah. And then it's, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to respond instead of react? Yeah. What, you know, because if you're conscious to the situation as a thing and you're not identifying deeply and like hold like trying to fortify around an idea of being a married person or having a certain number in your bank account or whatever and you just simply allow for whatever happened to happen then those cracks those breaks can ultimately lend you into being your unbreakable self right and, as that. and that's when when you're not to say like you call in like painful experiences but like yeah when you recognize quickly what they really are yeah are catalyst mm. One of the hugest catalysts I ever had in 2019 when that girlfriend broke up with me, January yeah. 12th. Mm. Got home from a trip to L.A. I was like, okay, I'm going to go. She has the dog. I'm going to go get the dog. We're probably going to like lay around, watch TV, whatever. Yeah. She's like, I walked in. She's like, sit down. And I was like, oh. Oh, this is that tone. She's like, I don't want to do this anymore. That uh, and I yeah. remember to like cold and hot at the same time, like yeah. heart rate up, also depressed at the same time. Yeah. But that was, and for the next three months, pain. Like emotional pain, yeah. Like I've never experienced, even yeah. with the death of my dad, the death of my sister, emotional pain I've never experienced. Yeah. But probably the most important experience that I've had in the last ten years. Yeah. Maybe my whole life. Yeah. Because it totally catalyzed me, like you said, like that. I was covered in like I don't know plaster or something. Like there was. Yeah. Like, I was just stagnant. I was a stagnant yeah. being. Yeah. And I was like, and, it, and the truth be told, like, this was not the first time I experienced this. Yes. But this was the most painful version of it. Yeah. Probably the third or fourth time I experienced this basically cycle. Like, it's like a mm. five-year cycle. Yeah. And so I was like, all right. I was at a mastermind, men's group, down yeah. in L.A. Yeah. And one of the facilitators was like, I was like, I told him, I was like, it was like a month after this. I don't want to be here. Yeah. I'm depressed. I just got my heart broken. I don't want, I don't want to be here, but I came for some reason. I said something like, this always happens to me. Or I always end up here. And he's like, well, stop asking yourself why you always end up here and start asking yourself why you allow yourself to end up here. Yeah. I was like, picking my gut. Yeah. But it was exactly what I needed because that catalyzed the amazing growth for me. Absolutely. It, it, like, I wouldn't be sitting right here right now if it wasn't for that. I Absolutely. still would be, like, overweight in that relationship, pretty miserable. Yeah. And so the thing is, is, like, things like that will allow us to see that like it's not just because the universe hates us or because source energy wants us to suffer. Yeah. It's because this is part of being called to your higher self. Yeah. This needs to happen. Yes. For you to be who Absolutely. you are. This is part of your soul contract. Correct. You called this in before you were born. Yes. Like this is it. Yeah. And it's all leading you to your North Star. Absolutely. That I'm <laughs> just gonna drop the mic, hit period on that. Cause that that's the story. Going to that. Dude. So good. Mm -hmm. All right. Talk to me through how can people find you? Because <coughs> yeah. you're you're guiding people through this car formula. I'm, I'm again I'm calling it the car formula. That's, you did but it's perfect, it's a good yeah, analogy. It is good, yeah. yeah. Get in the car cool. Get in the car. Let's yeah. fucking go. <laughs> Be your best self. How can people find you? What programs you got coming out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll go from there. So Instagram's the best way to find me. It's yeah. at Sam Gibbs Morris. That's G I B B S M O R R I S. Yeah. Where I spend most of my time Love as it. far as uh content and stuff like that. I do have a, I have two retreats coming up this year. One mm. is a men's retreat called a surrender retreat. And I actually, I need to say this. So I spell surrender. S-U-R-R-E-N-D-R. -R -R. No E-R on the end. Yeah. Because in order to fully surrender and fully experience, you got to drop the ego. Yeah. So I, I took Ooh, that last E out. That's a good one, man. Yeah, I did it with my, my men's program. My one-on-one -on -one coaching program is called Transcend. Yeah. And the last E is gone. I just saw like a little graphic where it's like, er, er, and then it drops, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, know the ego. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> so like I spell like committed, no E. Yeah. Transcend, no E. Yeah. 
yeah. surrender no e because it's just a reminder to myself mostly yeah that like in order to fully get committed in order to fully surrender in order to fully transcend yeah that destructive ego has got to get out of the way absolutely it doesn't even have to die ego yes. death i don't believe it yeah it needs to get out it needs to like just step on the go to the parking lot yes. go and go ride the bench yeah it just yes. need, it can still hang out absolutely but it can't run the show anymore agreed yeah Okay. So I have that one-on-one -on -one coaching program, Transcend, okay. which is 90 days. It's the car formula. Yeah. We clear, we align, we receive. Yes. Um, and then I have a, the Surrender Retreats, which are men's retreats, which I'm going to do four of them this year. Yeah. Florida Keys, Wyoming, uh, probably here in Austin, and then one maybe in Tulum. And then I have my partner, Idrea. We do a three-hour quantum alchemy journey, which is uh, we do Bufo, and then she has a quantum crystal resonance bed, which we use for accelerated integration. Yeah. So we take them through a Bufo ceremony, put them on the bed for 45, 60 minutes, and they go through, like, it, 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 the crystals, like, basically, like, let all the Bufo downloads land in your DNA. And so that's called, uh, oh, yeah, we're gonna, we have retreats. Check that one out. Yeah. More than welcome, brother. That'd <laughs> yeah. be amazing. So yeah. we have we do those. Those are three-hour mm. ceremonies, and then we ha we're also building a retreat, quantum alchemy retreats, which are going to be. We have one, I think, in Costa Rica is what we're looking at. That's amazing. Yeah. So we'll link in the show notes. Okay. And on the YouTube's and all that stuff, awesome. so that people can can get a hold of you for yeah. any one of those. I'm definitely going to come check out that quantum healing, dude. That sounds powerful. Yeah. Sounds potent. All right, brother. Any last words? Anything for us? I just want to say thank you. Yeah, um, man. This thank conversation you. was medicine. Yeah, and I think that you said something in the in the beginning about with the iron lung and the and the um, polio patients. Yeah, that is evidence that we are the only medicine we ever need. Yeah, we don't need iron lungs. We don't need plants. Yeah, I mean, the plants are amazing, and yeah. I love them. And yeah, like I'm all about it. Yeah, but like we are the medicine. Yeah, absolutely, breath work, breath work, breath work. it's presence, oh, love, yeah. connection. It's yeah, all of my healing revolves around breath work. So powerful. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. And, man, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Love you guys. Let's go. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Unbreakable Man podcast. If you found this episode valuable, then go ahead and leave a five-star review explaining how this podcast has helped you so more people can find it. If you want to be a part of the Brotherhood, then click the link in the description below. You can also check out the Unbreakable Man experience if you're ready to face a deeper challenge and change your life for the better in just three days. All right, guys. Thanks again for listening. I appreciate you. And as always, stay unbreakable.